I've got nothing to play. What am I going to procrastinate with? Okay, let's do this thing. Okay, so for some reason I have decided that I want to code a PS1 game. The only problem is that I have no idea how to do this, because I have never worked on hardware this old before. I have written a game engine in OpenGL, although of moderate quality, I still expect this experience to transfer to this project. But as I said, I've never seen a single line of code written for a PS1, so I have no idea what to expect. <gasps> Nowadays, the internet is still full of newish content for the PS1. There are several games and demos which are constantly pushing the barrier of this console's limitations. I am not going to shoot for the stars today though. What I am aiming for is a simple 2D game with enemies. Okay, so let the research phase commence. <laughs> Okay, I need coffee for this. Two thousand years later. Okay, so based on my intensive research, I have exactly two options to make my game. The two options are so-called uh, development kits, which are like a piece of software which allows you to write and compile binary files for the system you are writing your code for. And the two options are PSYQ... What was it called again? A few inches later... Yes, yes, PSYQ. It's PSYQ. Um, and the second one is so-called PS Noob SDK. Uh, the difference between the two. PSYQ was used all the way back in the day to create the actual games that we know and love. And PS Noob SDK is this sort of a new open source GitHub thing. Like, people write games with it, but it's not yet polished. There are a lot of bugs, it's not complete yet, so what I've decided to do is I'm going to use the PSYQ development kit and that's because um, I wanted the original way, I want to experience the real way that people wrote games back in the day. So yeah, the one single problem with this is that it requires a 32-bit system. Now, I don't have a 32-bit system in the habitable area of my room so I will have to go into the corner the corner the corner the corner my god the corner the corner okay I'm going in well wish me luck One eternity later. Oh. 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 I found it. It was a grueling journey, but I made it. I need more coffee.
Okay, so let me introduce to you this computer, which I call the Rocket, because, well, it is a rocket. It's got no battery, but most importantly, it's a 32-bit machine. Okay, get lost, you modern computer. Ah! It's time for some old-school stuff. Oh, yeah, I forgot. It doesn't have a battery, so... Yeah, I'm gonna have to crawl behind the desk. Oh, how lovely. This end goes here, this end goes... Where the heck does it go? Oh, here, fine. And now for the fun part, where I have to crawl under the desk. Okay. And as Dankbots would say, which is by, co by coincidence one of the channels which inspired the fooliness of this channel, Stand back. I am arming the nugget. Okay. Whoa! Hell yeah! Oh yes! The majestic sound. Okay, so I don't think I'm brave enough to connect this thing to the internet. Now that we successfully performed CPR on the rocket, it's time to install the actual software we will need. So first of all, we will need an emulator because I'm not going to burn a CD every time I'm, I'm going to test the actual game. I want some better way of debugging, so that's what I'm gonna do. And the second thing we need to install is the actual PSYQ development kit. Okay, so yeah, using a flash drive is most likely the only safe way to transfer files to this thing. Because, as I already said, connecting this thing to the internet, well, it might just be the most dangerous thing I would ever do. So, yeah, nope. Now I have successfully installed the EPSXE emulator, and now I'm going to try and start the development kit. Okay, so we have a basic Hello World program. It took me quite a long time, as you can probably tell, by the fact that it's a lot darker outside. So, yeah, but yeah, you should probably do what the program tells you to do, you know? I mean, it's the all-knowing vice program that I created. Bruh. By that time I just decided to call it a day and go to sleep because it was getting pretty late and tomorrow was another day. I don't have blank CDs. What the hell? How is it snowing? It's like April or something. What are those? Okay, so now that I have a 10 pack of CDs, I can finally start working on the actual game. I also realized that I needed a controller to test my games on the emulator. So I had to go through the dangers, which are my drawers. So I started working on the actual game itself. My goal here was to create a simple 2D game with one player and several enemies which would move randomly on the screen and if you would touch them then you would lose and if you would arrive to the destination also randomly selected on the screen you would win. Okay so as you can see I have made some progress. I can now move this um, blue cube around the screen so what I need to do now is to do some actual, you know, gameplay because this would frankly be too boring. 
I want to use this space to thank psxdev.net, which is a forum which contains all of the information I needed to create my own game. Even the Hello World program that you've seen was basically copy-pasted from them. Okay, so what I tried to do is that I tried to place 10 enemies and the player randomly on the screen, but instead I accidentally created this pretty cool effect, so... Yeah, I'm saving this one, because why not? <laughs> oh, let's go! Now, this looks much better. What I'm going to do now is randomly move the enemies around and detect if the player hits one. Shouldn't be too hard. It looks a little bit slow right now, but I suspect that it has to do with the slow simulation, the slow emulation itself, so... Yeah, I hope that the movement will be faster on the real hardware. Now, that's what I'm talking about. These are very simple enemies, which choose a random direction and a random speed every frame, and whenever they hit a wall, they will reappear on the other side of the screen. So it's basically an infinite playing field. Okay, so now we have collision detection and an actual game over screen. Let me show you. See? And when I collide into an enemy, you see, game over, Re please restart your console to play again. I think that's good enough. I think the last thing we need to do is make it winnable. So we need like a single yellow point, which if we collide with, it will end the game and it will say victory. Okay, so this is the finished product. We do have a victory screen and I will try to show it to you if I don't get killed and there it is it says you win please restart your console to play again because I want to make it a little bit interesting you know no I'm just you know too lazy to actually you know make a proper game restart mechanics and telling the user to restart the console is just easier so now what we have to do is to unpack these CDs and burn a game image that will allow us to play it on the actual hardware the difference between running an EXE, made for PlayStation of course, and actually running a disk image is the fact that the disk image needs to be licensed or else the PlayStation will refuse to start it and it needs to have that little in intro screen that we all remember. So that's what I'm going to do. Fun fact, that intro screen is actually part of the game disk. It's not on the PlayStation itself, it is part of the disk, which actually surprised me when I first heard of it. Am I the only person who like absolutely adores these little plastic discs? Like as a child I always tried to put them inside of a computer and it always didn't work and I was always like oh my god this has to be some super like secret FBI thing like super secret software. Well it isn't but you know it was fun. Well, this was actually much harder than I anticipated. You see the software which turns PS1 executables into ISO files is outdated even for Windows XP. Yes, it surprised me as well, but I had to get a new version or a Windows 98 virtual machine. I opted for the new version because a good one is available on the PSX dev forums and I just rolled with it. I have created an ISO of my game and now I'm going to try and run it in the emulator. I hope it will work, because I don't want to mess up a CD, that's why I'm trying it in an emulator first, so fingers crossed. It seems that it works, we didn't see the intro boot, that might be configurable, give me a second. Now it's time to actually burn the CD. Oh boy, a brand new CD. I haven't seen one of these babies in a while. Okay, so now I have to clean up this desk to prepare the place for the PS. The controller is prepared, the PlayStation is prepared, 
the TV is set up. Hopefully the volume is high enough so we can hear that glorious intro if it actually works. And now I guess it's time. I can only hope it works. My hands are really shaking like right now. I'm I'm just stressed out. Please come on. Good start. Bad start. Fuck. No, it worked. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. I was about to like... S Wait. Oh my god, it works. Oh my god, it works. It works so well. It works. Like, as I said, the the emulation on the rocket was way too slow, so everything appears to be moving way faster. But it actually works. Oh my god, Let, let's reset it and try to fail. That's so cool. Actually, even the correct certification is here. A CEE, that's for Europe. Oh god, man. It actually works. I didn't expect that at all. Okay, I hope you like what you're seeing, because I certainly do. But this is the end of today's video. Um, I would like to ask you to leave a like and subscribe to, you know, please the algorithm. And I will see you next time.